Zoax.net. Lesson 8. Simple Array Usage. The purpose of this lesson is to introduce the idea of arrays and to demonstrate the various syntax for using them in programs. An array is a collection of values. If you are familiar with other languages, PHP arrays are a little different. In some languages, arrays can only hold one type of value. In PHP, they can hold many different types of values, but we will hold off on that for the moment. In this first program, we create an array with the name Fruits of the Spirit and assign it the value that is returned from the array function. This might seem a little confusing if you are expecting a constructor, because this is not a constructor. So we do not use the word new here. Instead, array is a function that returns an empty array, in this case, because we have not passed anything into the function. In the next 12 lines, we add elements to the array by calling the array push function with the name of the array and the value that we want to add to the array. After this, we call the count function to print out the size of the array, which in this case will be 12. Below that, we create an unordered list and print out each value of the array as a list item. To access elements of this array, we use the bracket notation with an integer from 0 to 11. There are 12 elements in the array, but the indices of the array begin at 0, so there is no element at the index 12. The elements are numbered in the same order that they were added to the array, as we see when we execute this program. Recall that we printed the array size first, so that shows up before our list as the 12 at the top. Below this, we have our list of fruits of the spirit in the same order that we added them to the array because we accessed them in order with the numbers 0 through 11. Always remember that array indices begin at 0 by default. The second program demonstrates a different way to add elements to an array and how to create an associative array. The first half of the program creates an array of the four marks of the Catholic Church. Notice that the calls to array push have been replaced by these simple assignments to the array entries. Setting these array entries is equivalent to calling array push with each of these four values, so this is an alternative method of adding elements to an array. This next echo statement prints out the third element of the array at the index 2. After that, we call printr inside of a pre-element. The pre-element preserves formatting, and the printr function gives a convenient method for printing all of the elements in a nicely formatted way, as we will see. Below this, we create an associative array of fathers. In an associative array, elements are assigned and accessed by names, rather than numbers. So if we access the element at Jacob using his name, we get his father, who is Isaac in this case. Again, we call printr to print out the values of this associative array. Executing the program, we see this. The message, the third mark of the church is Catholic, uses the index to to access the third element, which contains the word Catholic. This is verified by the next part, where we print the array with the printr function inside a pre-element. The pre-element preserves formatting to give us this nice view of the contents of the array. After this, we use the name Jacob to access his father's name in the message, the father of Jacob is Isaac. Finally, we print out the associative array of elements with the printr function, just as before. This time the elements are indexed by names rather than integers. In our third program, we introduce some new methods for initializing arrays and adding elements to existing arrays. For the first array, we pass the strings one and holy into the array constructor function. This has the effect of creating a new array with those two strings already in it as the first two elements. By default, they are indexed by zero and one respectively. In the next line, we add an entry by assigning the value at the index to the value Catholic. This will replace the element at that index if it is already assigned, or it will simply extend the array up to that index and add the value. Note that if we had added the element at a later index such as 10, all of the intermediate indices would be unassigned. For this reason, it is good to use the array push function as we do in the next line. The array push function adds apostolic to the entry at index 3, as we would expect. If we had added Catholic at the index 10, 
This array push would have added apostolic at the next index, namely 11. It does not fill in the previously missed indices. After this, we call printr for illustration. For the next array, we use the arrow operator to create an associative array with the three elements Tara, Abraham, and Isaac. These values are assigned at the indices Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, respectively. The arrow operator is used to designate an index and a value simultaneously. In the next three lines, we add the three values Isaac, Jacob, and Jacob at the indices Esau, Joseph, and Levi. Finally, we call printr to display the results. Executing this program, we see that the first array contains the four marks of the church at the indices 0 through 3. In the second array, this father's array uses the names of biblical figures to access the names of their fathers. So accessing the array, for example, with the index Isaac, gives us the name of his father, Abraham. Our fourth example program demonstrates another method of initialization and that integer indices can be mixed with string indices in associative arrays. In this program, we initialize the array with empty square brackets. This creates an empty array, and it is the equivalent of using the array function with no arguments. After this, we add the element theological at the indices faith, hope, and love, because these are theological virtues. Next, we add an array of the cardinal virtues at the index cardinal. This demonstrates that we can mix the data types of an array. In this case, we have used an array of strings as an element within the array. This demonstrates array nesting. After this, we add the string 3 at the index 3. Then we add the elements automatic 0 and automatic 1 to the array by assigning them with empty brackets. This is the same as calling array push and assigns them to the indices 4 and 5, as we will see. Finally, we add test via an array push, which will put it at the index 6. To visualize how all of this has been added to the array, we call print r. This is kind of a mess, but the main purpose is to demonstrate the flexibility of PHP arrays. Finally, this last line demonstrates the access of an array element within an array, using the double indices. We can nest arrays within an array to any level that we desire, but we hold off doing that for now. In the last line, we demonstrate how to access one of the elements of the array within the array. To do this, we use cardinal to access the array within the array, and zero to access the value prudence within that array. Executing the program, we see our array of elements. We can see that there was an array added at the index cardinal. Also, notice that our numerical indices start at 3 because that was the first assigned value, and the other values follow that index. Our final program demonstrates how to initialize arrays via the bracket notation. The bracket notation is just an alternative to using the array function, and its syntax is similar. First, we create an array of the four marks of the church using the bracket notation. Then we print the array. Next, we create an associative array of biblical figures and their fathers and print that one. This just serves to demonstrate that we can use the bracket syntax for creating arrays, just like the array function, and the result is the same. Executing this program, we see the four marks of the church printed out in an indexed array, and the biblical fathers printed out in an associative array, because we use the arrow operator to initialize it and create the elements. With this, we have demonstrated the various methods by which arrays can be created and accessed.